style is not about contrasts and colors and making sure that you have magenta in your shadows and oranges in your highlights or whatever. Style is about your why. It is about what you have to say as a photographer. So forget about trying to create a cohesive Instagram grid. Sure, it can look really cool, but it will also look really flat. A lot of photographers feel lost when trying to define a style in their photography. Like, what even is a style in photography? Instead of trying to do that, I think all photographers in the world would benefit from defining their mission in photography instead. This is something that is much more powerful and will benefit you as a photographer in the long run. Defining why you take photographs is far more important and far more powerful because as you'll see in today's video, answering the question why you take photographs is actually going to lead into you having a style of your own. It's actually setting a mission statement for ourselves as photographers. And losing track of that why is so dangerous. Not knowing why we photograph, in my own personal experience, leads to lack of creativity, insecurity. It leads ultimately to procrastination. And procrastination is the death of art it's the death of creativity. So knowing your goals, knowing your why, setting your mission is important because if you do that, you'll stay on track and you'll deliver that which you want to deliver. Let's look at nine images that I've made over the last eight years that I've been active as a professional photographer. All these images comes from series of images. The series themselves are cohesive, coherent, and they all have their own unique color grading. So you could say that each series of images has its unique style. The original nine images that I showed you actually do stick together because all of them is part of my mission, of my why I photograph. Style is an incredibly vague concept, but if I were to try to explain it to summarize it, I would just say it's the thing that makes your art stick together, that makes it look coherent and cohesive to some degree because it does not include the why. Let's look very briefly at the images of Diane Arbus. Diane became internationally known for her provocative imagery. And I think that today she's still one of the most unique postmodern American photographers. So, you know, she's been criticized for objectifying perhaps some of her subjects, but I don't think that matters because the power of her photographs is so incredibly strong. And what I personally feel when I see her images is that I feel connection. I feel a woman seeking to make a point about people connecting with each other. To take a conservation example, let's look quickly at the images of Nick Brandt. I would like to believe that if you asked Nick what was more important to him, style or his mission, his why, I would personally very much like to believe that Nick would immediately say, I'm a conservation photographer. I would like people to conserve that which needs to be conserved. I spoke about these images in the video about conservation photography that I released a few weeks back. I'm going to put a link to that video below in the description so you can go and watch it after you finish this video if you want to. If you were to look in depth at the images of Edward Weston, I think that you will find immediately that style is something challenging to find. There's a lot of still life images, there's a lot of landscapes, there's quite a few portraits. And none of these different genres kind of stick together. But if you were to separate out only his landscapes, yeah, you can clearly see that he has a why. And through his images, I think this is clearly visible. But I don't think that his images necessarily all of them share a specific style, other than the fact that they are black and white and high contrast. I believe that he set out together with Ansel Adams and the rest of his pals to try to share a view on the world that would lead to conservation, to protection of the natural world. Do you think that Edward Weston, Diane Arbus and Nick Brandt were or are more driven by style or their mission, their why. Looking at their photographs, I would say that their mission with their photography is so incredibly clear. They are change makers. They are people trying with a purpose, or like Nick Brandt, trying to protect that in nature which needs 
protecting. The why, their mission, is incredibly clear in all of their images. But if you were to say, what is the style of each of these photographers? I think that you will be challenged to find and identify exactly what it is, because I believe all of these photographers have switched their style from one thing to another throughout their careers whenever it suited them based on their mission. So in terms of importance, I would say the style that they present to you is of a lot less importance as to the why they do something in the first place. Above anything else, these three photographers were or are authentic. And if you want to make it as a photographer, you need to find your own authenticity as well. And that is the only thing that should matter to you. I've just shown you three of perhaps the most famous photographers of all history. And I've just been able to deconstruct by just a few images the fact that these people perhaps did not have a specific style, but all of them had a mission. And this is what I believe we as photographers should do. We first need to define what our why is. Ask yourself, why do you take pictures? Why do you do it in the first place? Whatever it is, I want you to write down your whys on a sheet of paper. Try to be short, concise, specific. If you can, use only keywords. As an example, I will do this exercise myself. Why do I make photographs? Well, first I would say to have a positive impact on our world. That's something for me that is incredibly important. And the positive impact I want to have is in the natural space. So I'm going to write positive impact for the natural world. I would also say that I make photographs to leave a lasting impression in whoever sees my images. So I'm going to write leave lasting impressions. I would also say it is because I love exploring creative concepts. So I'm just going to write the keyword creative here. Another big reason why I do photography is to get out in nature. So I'm going to just write, get out into nature. And for me, something that I've always found that photography achieves for me is that it quiets my otherwise very loud and chaotic and overthinking mind. So I'm going to write, make my chaotic mind focused. What did you write? I would love to see what you wrote as keywords. Put it in the comments below and we can together try to actually get your mission statement. We're now going to continue this a little bit further by defining your what. What do you like to photograph? I enjoy photographing landscapes, wildlife, conservation stories, and I also like to do portraits of people in their own environments. Now, if I were to define landscapes a little bit better, I would say I really enjoy photographing wild landscape, wilderness. In terms of wildlife, I enjoy photographing most things. I really enjoy photographing bigger animals, so bigger mammals particularly. Write it down and be as specific as you can. The more specific you can get here, the easier it is, in my own personal view, for you to know exactly why and what to photograph. So be specific on your own sheet of paper. Almost all corporate entities in the world have a mission and a vision statement. These statements only really answer two questions, why and what. And we've just answered the same questions for us as photographers. Why do we take photographs and what do we take photographs of? Right? So we're now going to turn this into our mission and vision statement. All right? It's very simple. Look here on the screen. The mission statement is the why and the vision statement is the what. And we're going to combine them into one sentence. Have a look at this super simple template now on the screen. To create photographs of what to why. So, so just take your what's and insert them where it says what, and take your why's and insert them where it says why. Obviously you can't insert all of your keywords, but try inserting the most important one that you have. To give you an example, this here could be my own mission and vision statement. To create photographs of wild nature, to leave lasting impressions. I could easily expand on that and add a conservation angle to that. I do think that all photographs have a conservation angle if used correctly, so I don't necessarily think that I need to attach that to my own vision and mission statement. Now that you know why you're photographing and you know what you want to photograph, your life as a photographer is already so much simpler. All you need to do is stop and think for a second. Does the photograph that you're about to take 
hold true to your statement. If it doesn't, I think you should do one of three things. First, don't make the photograph. Second, make an exemption. Take the photograph anyway and be happy with it. Or thirdly, if this happens a lot, if you find that whenever you're out shooting, you're realizing that a lot of the photographs that you take do not fit with the mission and vision statement that you've set for yourself, I would say that your mission and vision statement is wrong and you need to go home and do this exercise all over again. Now that you have your what's, you have your why's, and you know how to put them together in a mission and vision statement, I would love to see that. So if you've already commented what your why was, what your what was, make a third comment in your thread of comments where you write out your own personal mission and vision statement. And I promise I'll give feedback to each and every one who writes it. If you have any questions about it, obviously pop it in there as well and I will answer those. Do you think that Edward Weston, Diane Arbus or Nick Brandt were or are more driven by their mission or their vision, their what. I think it's pretty clear from their images that over their photographic careers, they have photographed many different subject matters. None of them have held true to only one subject, which means that the what they have changed many times. But I do feel when looking at the images of these three great artists that they hold true to the why. They were on a path to tell a cohesive story through their images about why they're photographing. Above all else, these artists were authentic. And for me, the only way I can be authentic is to stay true to my why, why I photograph. And I think you perhaps should do the same thing. If you want to make it as a photographer, you should do like the great ones. Understand why you're photographing and deliver on that why every day that you're out. Because that is going to turn into your style. Style is not about contrasts and colors and making sure that you have magenta in your shadows and oranges in your highlights or whatever. Style is about your why. It is about what you have to say as a photographer. So forget about trying to create a cohesive Instagram grid. Sure, it can look really cool, but it will also look really flat. Go and look at your favorite photographers on Instagram. Can you see a why in their images? If you can't, hmm, maybe you need to reevaluate why you think they're so great. Now that you've understood my why, which is conservation photography, protecting the natural world that surrounds us, I think you should go and watch this video right here. This is a video where I deliver on my perhaps biggest conservation photography dream I've ever had. If you're more in a learning mode, I recommend you watch this video here where I make the bold statement saying that storytelling in landscape photography is absolute BS.